welcome in the previous lectures we have studied about the symmetric anti symmetric hermitian and anti hermitian matrices we have not uh, studied a lot about the orthogonal and unitary matrix so in this particular video we are going to study orthogonal and unitary matrices in details their properties so let uh, first i am starting with orthogonal matrix so first is your orthogonal matrix this lecture is a continuation of your special matrices part so orthogonal matrix so let us have its definition it is defined as if there is a matrix a and a transpose if i multiply with a then this if it turns out to be identity then this matrix a is called orthogonal provided all the elements of a are in real elements of a are your real quantities okay so that matrix is called an orthogonal matrix from here we can just define an another definition that is we you, we know that a a inverse is always identity so the definition of orthogonal matrices can be extended that if a transpose is equal to a inverse then that matrix is called to be an orthogonal matrix and there are few properties of orthogonal matrices which i wish to list here first is each row and each column of a orthogonal matrix can be treated as normalized vector so each row and each column of an orthogonal matrices are the normalized vector you can treat them and the second is any two rows or any two column of an orthogonal matrix can be treated as orthogonal vectors see in the previous lecture i have defined what i mean by normalization and what i mean here by orthogonal so that was why i have defined it earlier so these are basically few properties of an orthogonal matrices that it have that any two rows or any two columns of an orthogonal matrices are perpendicular to each other that are there are no projection of one component on the second means they are orthogonal vectors and the second thing is that each row and each column of an orthogonal matrices is treated as a normalized vector normalized vector means that the modulus of that vector is identity okay and the third property which i uh, wish to hear that the determinant the determinant of an orthogonal matrix will be either plus 1 or minus 1 in any orthogonal matrix you see if you find the determinant of that then the determinant will be either plus 1 or minus 1 so now let us have the proof of the last term of the third one that is the determinant of an orthogonal matrix is plus minus 1 so from definition we have seen that a a transpose is equal to 1 that is your identity so let me write it as identity so let me write it clear so this is your identity matrix okay so taking the determinant of both side so that is determinant of a a transpose is equal to determinant of identity determinant of a transpose is determinant of a into determinant of a transpose is equal to 1 determinant of identity is always 1 so determinant of a let us say it is 
some a determinant of a transpose is also a because transposing the matrix does not affect its determinant so that is 1 so a square is equal to 1 implies that a square is equal to plus minus 1 so this implies that sorry a is equal to plus minus 1 so this is equal to the determinant of a where a is orthogonal matrix is equal to plus minus 1 so you must remember these these properties of an orthogonal matrix you will encounter them many times so now let us move one more type of relation more type of matrix that is the second one which we which i wish to deal with today that is unitary matrix the most important matrix unitary matrix it is a very important because when you will study quantum mechanics every time you will deal with unitary matrices okay the second it has a specific relation with hermitian and anti hermitian relation that's why it is also very important and it is let us have the definition of the unitary matrix it is very similar to orthogonal matrix see how see i have defined that transpose operation is nothing but a uh, dagger operation that is in complex plane and transpose is in real plane so it is the definition of this is given similar to the orthogonal matrix that is first let us have a definition of this matrix so it is if a a dagger or this is a dagger a if this is equal to identity okay then this matrix a is called to be unitary matrix if the a are complex so see in complex reals are included so a might be real or complex this matrix is called to be unitary if a is are real then the, that name of that special matrix is treated as orthogonal matrix in general if a is are complex and a a dagger a dagger a is equal to identity so that matrix is called to be a unitary matrix or from here you can conclude that if a dagger is equal to minus of sorry a dagger is equal to a inverse of an matrix then that that matrix is called to be a unitary matrix and the, uh, now let us have some property of unitary matrix and at last we will see what is the specific relation between unitary hermitian and anti hermitian matrices and i will prove and i will show you how they are true and so let me write it here the first property that the determinant of unitary matrix will be of unit modulus unit modulus means if the determinant is imaginary then that the mod of that determinant is unity so let us have the proof of the statement as uh, we have did in for orthogonal matrix also so from here we have seen that a a dagger is equal to your identity which we have from definition okay so take the determinant of both the sides so this is determinant of a into determinant of a dagger is equal to 1 so let the determinant of a is like determinant of a determinant of a dagger is determinant of a conjugate because dagger is defined as complex conjugate conjugate plus the transpose so transpose does not affect the determinant but complex transpose have its effect okay so that is equal to 1 and you know from complex number that z z prime is mod of z square so this is mod of a square is equal to identity this means that the determinant of matrix a where a is unitary is always 1 let me state few more properties of unitary matrix and the second property is the same way 
each row and each column of a unitary matrix can be treated as normalized vector the same way the def but here the vectors will be complex and the third one is any two rows or any two column of an unitary matrix can be treated as orthogonal vectors see here the orthogonal vectors and normalized vectors the definition should be for complex number which we have deal in last last lecture see one thing i wish i would i would like to clear it here we have studied when we have studied the eigen value and their properties we have defined one thing that the determinant of any matrix a is equal to product of eigen values product of eigen values see uh, you have studied two things that is orthogonal matrix and unitary matrix and the determinant is here the determinant was plus minus 1 and here the determinant has unit unit modulus that is the modulus of that has always be 1 so that determinant of a is always related to the product of eigen values so for orthogonal matrices the product of i eigen values will always be plus minus 1 and the product of eigen value or the eigen value of an unitary matrix has unit modulus so do remember now i am going to list uh, some properties of because we are uh, defining the determinant and trace and everything all so today i am going to have few formulas for determinant and trace this are useful when you will dealing you all have studied this in class 12 but still just for remember see any trace of a is equal to p if the trace of a any matrix a is equal to p then its determinant of a is equal to q sorry if trace of a is equal to p and determinant of a is equal to q then the trace of matrix k a where k is any scalar is equal to k times p means if you multiply the matrix by k times then the trace will also be multiplied by the k times and the what happens to the determinant that determinant of k a is equal to k ki power n times q where n is the order of the matrix where n is the order of the matrix and remember that a should be your square matrix always because trace is always defined for square matrix and determinant too so these are two formulas if if i multiply any matrix by a scalar factor that is k then how the trans trace and determinant changes this is important to know because the trace of an matrix is given by the sum of eigen values of that matrix and the determinant is given by the product of eigen values lambda 1 lambda 2 3 lambda and where lambda are the eigen values so if you multiply a matrix by any scalar k then trace and determinant is going to be changed okay one more definition definition not basically formula what is the determinant of exponential of power a a is a matrix and e is a exponential which you know so this is equal to e raised to power trace of a see this is a very important formula this this uh, the questions on this formula has been asked again and again in various examination last year that was in 2018 uh, i think tifr asked one problem based on this tifr asked one problem on this basically formula that was determinant of a was equal to 
determinant of exponential of a is equal to e raised to power trace of a so if you know the matrix a then you can easily find the trace of a that is the sum of the eigen values or sum of the diagonal elements of that matrix you can directly conclude what should be the determinant of exponential of a should be so uh, this was today for orthogonal and unitary matrix in the next lecture we will be dealing about the similarity transformation of the matrices so stay with me and uh, if you have not shared not subscribe the channel please do subscribe the channel thank you